Hello everybody, welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. Please leave your bias at the door and join us to count down the 10 worst teams in championship history. I have gone back to 92-93, so we're going to list the 10 teams with the fewest points since then. Before we get into the list, a couple of points of order. If you think 92-93 is not far enough to go back, I do obviously because that's what I've um, work the data on here. Please put any other honourable mentions in the comments. And the normal please, do not take this list personally. It's not an attack on any of these clubs. It's simply a look back in history and a statistical list, okay? No emotion has gone into it from my side. So if you're going to reply back with a big paragraph of all the mitigating factors, great. You can tell me all about it, but please don't feel your club is under attack. What I am interested in is a couple of things, testing out our relegation theories to the nth degree, we always say on the channel here, owners relegate clubs, chaos relegates clubs, and size relegates clubs. They're three theories that we've posited. One of them particularly is going to come through in these disastrous seasons. And also, I'm sorry, Barnsley fans, but a lot of, um, a lot of you have been asking, you've been projecting points totals for this very poor season that Barnsley are on at the moment and telling me where would they finish on the list. You're going to find out in a minute. Now, this list isn't exactly a top 10 because we are tied um, at 36 points with five teams and then we're going to drop to number eight. So let's get those five out of the way. This does also um, come into another big theory of mine. Well, it's not a theory of mine, but we know the 10-year average for survival in the championship is if you get 45 points on average over the last 10 years, you survive. So 45 to survive um, is a number we need to think about when we start here at these teams on 36 points would make you the 10th worst championship team ever. And there they are in 99-2000. Uh, I would say not a vintage year, but it was a vintage year because Ipswich got promoted that year, of course. Um, but both Swindon and Port Vale um, ended on 36 points. Swindon went into administration that season. So our first example of a club running out of money, that's going to be a recurring theme, I have to say. Port Vale is a slightly different one because it's a club that had a historical peak. I think they got up to 7th, 8th, 9th or something in the second tier at one point, and this was the beginning of the drop-off and some far bigger problems than this for Port Vale down the line. Now you can see there, famously, 2003-2004, Wimbledon. Well, that's the last season Wimbledon existed in that form. Obviously, again, run out of money, administration, off to the hockey stadium in Milton Keynes, and the registration was then taken over. Leeds in 2006-2007, isn't really a 36-point team. They went into administration, I think, on the last day of the season, if I'm right in saying, but they were they were already going down, if I've got my info and my total correct, and they did have a points deduction then levied on. Finally, there, Doncaster um, in 11-12 finished on 36. Interestingly, um, I had a look back. George Friend, who went on to have a great championship career, uh, James Coppinger, who played like a million games for Doncaster. James Husband, who's still in the championship with uh, Blackpool. And one Billy Sharp were all at Doncaster that season. So not entirely sure. Maybe um, those players weren't quite performing at the peak of their powers there. How they managed to get such a low total that season. I'm sure you'll tell me down there in the comments as we move on to what is going to be number eight now. And it is Peterborough in 2009-2010. So look, you can see the um, points record at the top there. 34 points, just eight wins. So they are two fewer. No 35-point teams in the championship there since 92-93. Um, and what are we looking at here? Owners, chaos or size? Well, it's chaos, isn't it? They had four managers during this season. Um, Darren Ferguson, he's there now, amazingly. Uh, Mark Cooper, Jim Gannon, Gary Johnson. Um, yeah, I think Mark Cooper was only there a very short while. One of those ones in the middle of the season where they try it, it doesn't work out. And then I think Gary Johnson basically came in at the end of the season with a view to starting the next season. Um, 
They did still have some of their good attacking players they're famed for, Peter. Barrera, McLean, George Boyd, Craig McHale Smith scored a lot of goals at that level. But a dreadful season for Peterborough, um, culminating in a relegation in 2010. 34 points. Get any memories of that team if you really want to. Um, posh fans or maybe playing that team um, for other fans in 2009-2010. Number seven. It's a first appearance for Bolton on this list. And it's a first appearance for the 2018-19 season as well. I have for a long time said 2018-19 was actually a vintage championship season with some very good teams at the top, i.e. Farkas, Norwich, uh, Wilders, Sheffield United, Bielsa's Leeds, uh, West Brom of Barnsgale, Rodriguez, Aston Villa of Grealish, Abraham, Mings and Derby of Wilson, Tamori and Mount. What that means, though, if you get a high tide at the top, you might get some whipping boys at the bottom. Bolton Wanderers were one of them. Uh, you can see only eight wins. And the amazing thing about Bolton that season is they scored 10 points in their first four games. They won three and drew one. So they actually went from um, pretty much automatic promotion form over four games down into abject one of the worst ever in the championship form. And it was chaos, wasn't it? Do you remember the game postponed and players threatening to boycott uh, because they hadn't had their salaries paid towards the end of the season? Um, I remember an Ipswich game being cancelled, then reinstated, then cancelled because uh, they couldn't get stewards and, and the computer system went down and it was just disastrous there at Bolton. Um, Gary O'Neill was there, Wheater and Beavers, some long in the tooth. Uh, centre-halves, but terrible season for Bolton in 18, 19 and 7th. And here's one I am not going to enjoy talking about. Uh, Ipswich Town, the sixth worst team in Championship history. That same season, Ipswich only won five games and they scored 31 points. Oh dear. And I saw lots and lots of this game. An absolutely terrible Ipswich team. And we are into owners relegate clubs and change relegates clubs, aren't we? Um, a reset by Marcus Evans, who was trying his best to spend within FFP, whilst Mick McCarthy kind of propped things up. McCarthy left, Waghorn left, Webster left, McGoldrick left, Garner left, Selena wasn't there on loan. And I don't want to pile in on these players, but they were replaced by um, Paul Hurst as the manager and a bunch of players Paul Hurst came up against in League One. Now, of course, if you sign the best players in League One, they may well step up. But unfortunately, uh, Caden Jackson, John Nolan, uh, Janoy Danassian, Toto Enciala, Guion Edwards, none of them really stepped up to championship level and none of them are playing at that level. Now, in fact, uh, Danassian is still with Ipswich in League One, which is, of course, where they ended up. Um, Paul Lambert came in and, yeah, um, the ship was already sinking, we think, at that point. And, yeah, just one of the worst transfer windows and handovers of management you will ever see at my club, Ipswich, to be the sixth worst championship team ever. Sorry, Bolton fans, but it is indeed back to Bolton, who are also fifth in this list in 2015-16. Uh, Bolton, remember Bolton were in the Premier League up until... 2012 but um, once the um, bloom was off the rose and the money started to run out the collapse has been pretty dreadful obviously they were um, down in league two weren't they just a season a season or two ago in fact only five wins there for Bolton as well they had a massive clear out in the summer um, raised some money from selling Tim Ream um, on he was the last viable asset, but they were left with nothing, really. Gary Medine was there. Rob Holding was there, um, interesting enough. He's gone on to play in the Premier League for Arsenal. Emil Heskey was also seeing out his days there, but once the squad was completely stripped due to, I presume, financial reasons there, Bolton didn't have much of a hope and they only won five games and they only just hit the 30-point mark, that 26 defeats for the Wanderers. Get your memories in of that if you really want to. Here's the first appearance for Rotherham. Spoiler alert in this list. The fourth worst championship team ever was Rotherham in 2004-2005. And we are very much in chaos relegates club territory here. Rotherham have been amazing, hadn't they? They got up under 
Ronnie Moore. I think they went up two divisions and they were massively disrupted in, in the championship. They beat a lot of teams and had a couple of very good seasons up there, but it all came to an end. And very much like perhaps the Port Vale story um, earlier in the list where a team reaches the peak of its powers and then uh, drops off speedily. We know in football, in economics and in nature, a steep increase is normally followed by um, a sharp drop. And Rotherham got that in 2004. 2005, chaos as well. Ronnie Moore was manager. Then Alan Neal as caretaker. Mick Harford um, ends up the season. The consortium takes over, I think, to get them out of administration. Possibly, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, some familiar names. TV Scott Minto was playing. Current manager... Paul Warren was also in that team. And we've just mentioned Paul Hurst, who is going to have the indignity of being in this list as the manager of Ipswich, the sixth worst ever championship team, and a player at Rotherham, the fourth worst ever championship team. Sorry, Paul. He's at Grimsby now, isn't he? But there we go. Get your memories in of that side. And we will go on to third. And yes... The good old Oystons, or I'm sure Blackpool fans will have a very, very different word that I couldn't possibly use on YouTube. But this is Blackpool 2014-15. An utter, utter, unmitigated disaster, this. Only had seven contracted players at the start of the season. Cutting costs. The, um, the accusation of the Oystons is they went up to the Premier League. They banked all the money, basically that was earned in the Premier League without ever really spending anything and then just cut, asset stripped everything when the team went back down to the Championship. 42 players were signed during this season on loans and short-term contract. And it's another double appearance for poor old Gary Medine. He was in there on the Bolton list, wasn't he, in... Um, what was that? 15, 16, or was it 18, 19? I don't remember. Um, so there we go, 15, 16. He's going to appear again on this list. Another few familiar names. Joe Rothwell was in on loan. He's currently doing very well for Blackburn in the Premier League. Jamie O'Hara of TalkSport. John Lundstrom. And a young, bright Asai Samuel, who later went to QPR and a uh, big transfer away to Turkey last season. Uh, the points... 26 for Blackpool that season. Only four wins. 91 goals conceded. We're getting closer to the 100. Are we going to make it? I think you all know that we are about to make the 100 goals conceded. And it was Stockport County in 2001-2002. All kinds of chaos here. 23 points is all that Stockport got in 2001-2002. Lots to say. Look, they got six wins. They got more wins than um, we had Ipswich on five, didn't we? Bolton on five. Rotherham, five. Blackpool, four. Obviously drew a lot more games. But Stockport lost 32 and conceded 102 goals. Um, they were 23 points adrift of safety by the end of this season. Andy Kilner and Carlton Palmer, who pretty much, apparently, from what I read, reset the whole team some, um, yeah, some names. Mike Flynn left, who was a great player for Stockport. So was Shefki Kuki, who's going um, gonna to have a really good career after that for a good few years. Um, Aaron Wilbraham and Dave Challoner of long throw fame were all there. But again, this smacks of um, perhaps uh, Port Vale, Rotherham a little bit, although Rotherham have run well since then, maybe to disprove that rule. But of a team peaking, Stockport again, like that Rotherham team in the early part of the um, 20th century. The Stockport team, I remember with Brett Angel, um, Alan Armstrong. Who was that winger? Cooper? Kevin Cooper? I can't remember um, the exact names. But probably their greatest team ever, wasn't it? Finished 7th, 8th, 9th, that outside the playoffs, those positions, um, those years. Gary Megson, maybe, um, was the manager. I'm trying to... I'm going back into my brain into the late 90s. But yeah the peak of their power, the drop-off, and they've had real problems um, in recent years, Stockport, in terms of money. And money is the root of all evil in this list. And who is the worst championship team ever? Rotherham, again, in 2016-17. It's a tie, look, 23 points as well. I think those people who 
Cup the Championship at um, 04 05 um, when it changes name. Normally drop Rotherham in, but obviously uh, Stockport are tied. Um, we'll make Rotherham our number one for um, no reason whatsoever. So it really is a joint number, joint number one there. But there is poor old Paul Warren in the list again, uh, bless him. He picked up Rotherham during this disastrous season. Only five wins for the Millers in 16-17. 28 points adrift. They started the season with Alan Stubbs as manager. Kenny Jackett then, we've seen this a few times in this list, had it for a little while. And uh, poor old Warney had to come in and take it over at the end of the season. To be fair, as I've said about Rotherham, uh, Warren has done a fine job and he's been promoted a couple of times and maybe promoted again this season from League One, hasn't he? Um, and look, Neil Warnock was there the season before and uh, went great guns to keep them up. Um, it did feel quite sort of temporary, didn't it? I, I think um, that was very, very much a, a quick hit of success and Rotherham survived, but th there was no long-term viability in that and they dropped off a cliff this season. Uh, obviously, it's chaos relegating a club here with the three different managers across the season. And yeah, it just gets away from you in the end. What I will say, Johnson Clark Harris, um, huge goal scorer with Peterborough last season was there. Jerry Yates, huge goal scorer with Blackpool last season was there. Um, Danny Ward got a hat trick last weekend. He was there. Semi Ajayi, who got promoted um, in 1920 with West Brom was there as well. So they did have some good players, but again, maybe not at the peak of their powers or in the right circumstances, for sure. So there is the end of our list. Get your comments, get your memories in on any of those. And the Barnsley projection, I believe at the moment is 28 points, or is it 26? Um, it's there or thereabout. So at the moment, if Barnsley keep up uh, their current abject bad form, um, they are going to be on this list. Come on, surely I can do better than that. I want to give you the exact number. Let me just bang the calculator up on my phone. There you go. It was the last calculation I did. 24.79. So just shy of 25 points. Um, Barnsley are projecting this season. Um, I'm not doing the same for Derby because we assume, given their recent form, they may get higher points. And obviously they've had 21 point deduction. But look, we'll keep an eye on it. But hopefully for the Barnsley fans sake, they can trend up a little bit. Else they are very, very much going on this list this season. Get your comments in again. Please do not feel the need to defend your team. Yeah, give me the mitigating circumstances. I've, hopefully I've researched them and uh, been fair to every team. But this is in no way um, an attack on any of these teams. It's a historical list. Um, and as we discuss often on this channel, um, if you're a football fan and you, perhaps you're taking this personally, maybe that's on you rather than um, us making the list here at the channel. It's supposed to be interesting, although it may not be fun uh, to relive some of those memories. Look, my team was on the list for God's sake. And I think I went, to, I think I looked up, I went to 32 of those games that season. The victory is completely stinking it out. So... I'm not picking on anybody if my lot's on the list, am I? There we go. Uh, get your comments in um, on those teams on the list, your memories of supporting them, of playing against them, and your thoughts on will we have a team joining the list this season? Again, apologies, Barnsley fans. It is what it is. Thank you, everybody, for watching. That was the 10 worst teams. 10 fewest point scoring teams, if you want me to be very specific. Since 92-93. I'm going to say what the title is going to be. The 10 worst teams in championship history. There you go. Over and out.